I hadn't planned to come home early. The flight from Denver landed ahead of schedule. A rare occurrence with the stormy weather we've been having all week. My phone buzzed with a message as I switched it off airplane mode. It was a simple love you. See you Sunday. From my wife, Laura. Little did she know, I'd be walking through our door in less than an hour. As my taxi pulled up to our quiet suburban home, the familiar sense of comfort washed over me. I imagined Laura's surprise, her smile lighting up as she saw me. Maybe we'd go out for a quiet dinner, just the two of us, or perhaps spend a lazy evening in, curled up with a movie we'd both been wanting to see. I quietly unlocked the door, planning to surprise her. The house was oddly silent. Laura? I called out, but only the soft hum of the refrigerator answered back. Dropping my bags, I wandered through the living room and into the kitchen. A quick glance at the table stopped me dead. There were two wine glasses, both used, and a man's watch I didn't recognize next to Laura's phone. A cold prickle ran down my spine as I heard laughter from upstairs. Laura's laughter, but it wasn't alone. There was a deep, unfamiliar male voice accompanying hers. My heart raced as I took the stairs two at a time, my earlier excitement turning into a sinking dread. Reaching the top, I paused by our slightly ajar bedroom door. The voices were clearer now, unmistakably playful and intimate. You're so bad, I heard Laura giggle, a sound that used to warm my heart now twisting it painfully. I pushed the door open with shaking hands, my stomach clenching as I caught sight of them. Laura, my wife of eight years, looked up in shock, her cheeks flushed with more than just wine. Beside her, wearing only a disheveled shirt, was Marcus, a colleague from her office whom I'd met at several company parties. James, Laura gasped, scrambling to cover herself with the duvet. You're early. I. this isn't what it looks like. But it was exactly as it looked. The room swam before my eyes as Marcus awkwardly got to his feet, mumbling a lame apology before hurrying past me, his head down. The silence that followed was heavy, filled only with the sound of my breathing and the distant rumble of a car as Marcus presumably made his escape. I stood there, rooted to the spot, the image of them together seared into my mind, the betrayal slicing through me like a blade. Lara, how could you? My voice was a whisper, but it carried all the weight of my devastation. The shock of seeing Lara with Marcus was paralyzing, and I found myself pacing the length of our hallway, trying to steady my breathing and marshal my thoughts. Anger surged through me, followed quickly by confusion and despair. Why, Lara? Why us? I knew I couldn't handle this alone. I needed support, immediate and assertive. Pulling out my phone, my fingers fumbled as I dialed my sister, Ava. She answered on the second ring. James? Is everything okay? It's late. Ava's voice was laced with concern. Can you come over? It's I need you here, Ava. It's Laura. I managed to say my voice breaking. On my way, she responded without hesitation, the line going dead as she presumably rushed to my aid. Next, I called my best friend, Eric, who had known Laura and me since college. He was always the logical one, my go-to for grounded advice. Eric, I caught her, was all I said when he picked up. I'll be right there he replied, no further questions asked. While I waited for them, I sat on the edge of our bed, the bed I shared with Lara, now tainted with the imprint of her betrayal. The minutes stretched endlessly before I heard the sound of hurried footsteps approaching our front door. Ava was the first to enter, her expression one of worry that shifted quickly to anger as she took in my disheveled appearance. James, tell me everything, she demanded, her arm around my shoulder as we sat on the couch. Before I could answer, Eric arrived, his usual calm demeanor edged with urgency. As they both sat beside me, their presence a comforting force in the chaos of my emotions, I recounted everything from the moment I walked in on Laura and Marcus. We need to confront her together, Ava said firmly after a tense silence. She needs to explain this. Eric nodded in agreement. But we also need to think about the next steps, legally and personally. You're not in this alone, James. Their words, filled with solidarity and concern, bolstered me. I felt a flicker of strength returning, enough to face Laura, who had remained silent in our bedroom. Together, we stood and made our way to the bedroom. Laura was sitting on the edge of the bed, her eyes red, a clear sign of tears, but it was her expression of resignation that struck me the most. She looked up as we entered, her gaze flickering between me and the allies at my side. Laura, we need to talk, I began, my voice steadier than I felt. The conversation that followed would decide much more than just the fate of our marriage. It was a pivotal moment, one that required every ounce of resolve I could muster. Lara's eyes widened as she saw Ava and Eric flank me on either side, 
a clear signal that this was not a private couple's quarrel but a breach of trust exposed to the inner circle. I took a deep breath, feeling the slight tremor in my hands begin to steady with the support of my sister and best friend at my side. Laro, what happened? I asked, my voice low but firm. The room was thick with tension, every small sound magnified in the silence that followed my question. She looked down at her hands, clasped tightly in her lap, then up at me, her eyes shimmering with unched tears. James, I, I don't even know where to begin, she stammered, her voice a whisper of defeat. Start with why, I pressed, needing to understand how our life together had unraveled so suddenly. Lara sighed, a long, weary exhalation, as if the weight of her decisions was suddenly too much to bear. It wasn't planned, James. Marcus and I, we just, it started as a silly flirtation. It didn't mean anything. But it meant something to me, Laura. To us. My voice cracked with emotion. Ada squeezed my shoulder in silent support, her presence a comforting warmth at my back. Eric stepped forward, his tone more pragmatic. Laura, think about what you're saying. Flirtation or not, it led to this. It led to betrayal. Lara winced as if struck. I know, and I'm so sorry. I never wanted to hurt you. It just got out of control. Ava interjected sharply. Got out of control. Lara, you made choices. This didn't just happen to you. You decided to betray James. The harsh truth of Ava's words hung heavy in the air. Lara looked up at her, then at me, the realization of the full impact of her actions dawning on her face. I know, she murmured. And I regret it deeply. Regret doesn't undo the hurt, I said quietly. The pain was palpable, a dull ache that throbbed with each beat of my heart. Where do we go from here, Lara? How do we fix this? Lara shook her head slowly, her gaze uncertain. I don't know if we can, but I want to try if you'll let me. I still love you, James. That never changed. Eric looked between us, his analytical mind always searching for a solution. If there's a chance to salvage this, it starts with honesty and transparency. Full disclosure of what happened. No more secrets. I nodded, feeling a small tentative seed of hope amidst the ruins. We need to talk about everything, Laura. No more lies, no half-truths. If we're going to move forward, it has to be on a new foundation. Laura agreed, her voice firmer. I'll do whatever it takes. I owe you that much. As the confrontation drew to a close, the atmosphere shifted slightly, from charged and hostile to a cautious, fragile truce. We'd agree to begin couples counseling, and Laura promised to cut all personal ties with Marcus. It was a small, perhaps even an adequate first step, but it was a start. As Ava and Eric left, promising their continued support, I turned to face Laura again. The road ahead was uncertain, fraught with challenges and pain, but also just maybe a chance for redemption and healing. The confrontation was over, but the journey to rebuild was just beginning. In the days following the confrontation, the ripple effects of Laura's actions became increasingly apparent. It wasn't just our marriage that was affected. Our social circle, our mutual friends, and even our professional lives began to feel the strain of the revelation. I had returned to work, hoping to find solace in the routine, but the whispers followed me. Marcus, it turned out, was a well-known figure in our community, and news of the affair spread like wildfire. Colleagues who once greeted me with warm smiles now offered nothing more than awkward nods, or avoided eye contact altogether. It was clear that the scandal had tarnished more than just the personal lives involved. It cast a shadow over professional reputations as well. Lara faced even harsher scrutiny. Her job at the marketing firm, where she and Marcus had met, became untenable. Gossip swirled around her, and despite her attempts to maintain professionalism, the atmosphere turned chilly. By the end of the week she resigned, the emotional toll visible in her haggard appearance and somber demeanor. At home, the impact was just as profound but far more painful. We started seeing a marriage counselor, Dr. Ellis, who encouraged open communication and transparency. Each session, while hopeful, dredged up feelings of betrayal, hurt, and anger that were difficult to manage. Laura was remorseful, often breaking down into tears, pleading for forgiveness. I struggled with a tumult of emotions. Forgiveness seemed distant, a mountain too steep to climb at the moment. The tension spilled over into our family life. Our relatives were divided in their reactions. Lara's parents were supportive of her, urging me to consider reconciliation and healing. On the other hand, my sister Ava remained fiercely protective, her interactions with Lara cool and distant. Family gatherings, once a source of joy and comfort, now felt like navigating a minefield of unspoken words and veiled judgments. The hardest hit, perhaps, were our mutual friends. Some chose sides, 
while others pulled away, unwilling to get involved in what had become a messy, painful situation. Invitations to social events dwindled. The vibrant social life we once enjoyed together seemed a relic of the past. Amidst this, the silent phone calls and late-night messages started. Anonymous voices filled with scorn chastised me for staying or taunted Lara for her indiscretions. It seemed our private turmoil had become public spectacle, entertainment for those who thrived on the misfortunes of others. This collateral damage was not something I had fully anticipated when I first discovered the affair. The destruction was not confined to our home. It spread far and wide, affecting everything and everyone we touched. As I sat in our living room one evening, the setting sun casting long shadows across the floor, I pondered the ruins of what had once been a happy, bustling life. The cost of betrayal, I realized, was not just a broken heart, it was a shattered world. And the task of rebuilding it, if even possible, would be monumental. As the personal fallout of Laura's affair began to settle into a new, uneasy normalcy, the legal repercussions started to come into focus. Although there was no criminal case to be made, the legal entanglements we found ourselves wrapped up in were mostly about severing ties, both marital and professional. I met with a lawyer, a family friend named Richard, who laid out the options before me. Divorce was on the table, and Richard explained the process with a clinical detachment that made my stomach churn. We discussed the division of assets, potential alimony, and even the possibility of a contested divorce if Laura didn't agree to the terms. James, you need to think about your future, Richard advised, his tone somber. This isn't just about ending a marriage. It's about protecting yourself financially and emotionally. I nodded, feeling the weight of his words. The thought of divorce was daunting, not just the legal process, but the finality of it. It meant acknowledging that what Laura and I had built over the years was truly over. Meanwhile, Laura was dealing with her own legal challenges. Her resignation from the marketing firm had not been the end of her professional woes. Marcus, caught in the scandal's fallout, had been terminated, and he was now suing the company for wrongful termination, claiming that their relationship had not influenced their professional conduct. Laura was roped into this legal mess as a key witness, which added another layer of stress and public scrutiny. Our counseling sessions with Dr. Ellis touched on these issues, but it was clear that the legal battles were putting a strain on any progress we made. Each legal letter, each call from our lawyers, seemed to undo the tentative steps we took toward understanding and forgiveness. One evening, as Laura and I sat at the kitchen table surrounded by legal documents and bills, the tension reached a breaking point. Laura looked up from a stack of lawyers' letters, her eyes weary. James, is this worth it? The lawyers, the fights, maybe it would be easier if I just left. The hurt in her voice was palpable, and for a moment, my resolve wavered. Despite everything, the thought of her walking away for good was heart-wrenching. I don't know, Laura, I admitted, my voice hoarse with emotion but we have to think about more than just our feelings. There's so much at stake here. As we continued to navigate the legal intricacies, it became clear that the decisions we made now would have long-lasting effects on our lives. Every signed document, every court appearance, and every legal consultation felt like a step further away from the life we had dreamed of together. The legal entanglements were more than just a necessary evil. They were a constant reminder of the fragility of trust and the painful consequences of betrayal. They were not just about dividing assets or settling scores. They were about dismantling a shared life, piece by painful piece. The journey towards forgiveness was neither straight nor predictable. It meandered through the rugged terrains of hurt and betrayal, and at times it seemed an insurmountable endeavor. Still, Laura and I continued our sessions with Dr. Ellis, each meeting peeling back layers of pain and unveiling the raw, tender spots of our relationship. Forgiveness is not about forgetting, James. Dr. Ellis explained one afternoon, her voice calm and reassuring. It's about choosing to not let the past dictate your future. It's about healing the wound, not erasing it. These words echoed in my mind as I sat across from Laura, observing the changes in her. The remorse she carried was evident in her downcast eyes, and the way her voice trembled when she spoke of the past. She was trying, that much was clear. One particular session, Dr. Ellis suggested a different approach. Today, I want you both to write down what forgiveness means to you, she instructed. Don't think about the other's perspective. This is personal. We both scribbled in silence, the only sound the scratching of pen on paper. When we finished, Dr. Ellis asked us to exchange notes. Lara's handwriting shook as I read her definition. Forgiveness is giving us the chance to rebuild and rediscover the love that got lost in my mistakes. My own note was more hesitant, but hopeful. 
Forgiveness is letting go of the hurt while holding on to the lessons learned. It's a path to peace. Discuss, Dr. Ellis prompted, watching us closely. Lara took a deep breath, her eyes meeting mine for the first time that session. I want that chance, James, to rebuild, to make things right between us. The sincerity in her voice tugged at my heart. It was a moment of vulnerability, a crack in the facade that had built up between us over the months. I'm scared, I admitted, the words heavy on my tongue. Scared that if I forgive, it means what happened was okay. But I see you, Lara. I see the effort, and it does mean something to me. This admission seemed to relieve some tension, and Lara reached across the table, her fingers brushing mine. It was never okay, she whispered. I'll spend the rest of my life proving that to you if you let me. The road to forgiveness was complex and fraught with emotional landmines, but it was also lined with moments of connection like this one, small but significant glimmers of hope that perhaps we could salvage the ruins and build something new and stronger. In the weeks that followed, our relationship took on a new rhythm, characterized by more open conversations and fewer silences. Forgiveness was still a work in progress, a delicate dance of give and take, but it was moving forward, one painful yet promising step at a time. As the weeks turned into months, Lara and I gradually found our rhythm. We were learning to navigate our relationship anew, fortified by the painful lessons of the past. Forgiveness was still a tender shoot, fragile and easily bruised, but it was growing, nurtured by our efforts and the genuine desire to recover what we had lost. In this phase of rebuilding, we focused on re-establishing trust. Dr. Ellis had advised us to set clear boundaries and communication rules, and we took her guidance seriously. We started scheduling weekly check-ins, sessions where we could discuss our feelings, frustrations, and fears without judgment. These moments became our safe space, a time when we could be vulnerable with each other. James, I want you to know that I appreciate you, Laura said during one of these check-ins. Her voice was steady, her eyes meeting mine with an intensity that spoke of her earnestness. I appreciate the patience, the space, and the effort you're putting into us. I nodded acknowledging her words, and I appreciate your transparency, Laura. It's not easy, but it's rebuilding the trust that was lost. Part of our rebuilding process involved creating new memories to replace the old tainted ones. We started going on regular date nights again, choosing places we'd never been before, experiences that were ours alone and untainted by the past. Whether it was trying out a new restaurant or attending a local concert, each outing added a layer of positivity to our relationship. Moreover, we rediscovered intimacy. Initially, it was awkward, the physical acts overshadowed by the ghosts of our recent past. But as we continued to communicate and heal, intimacy returned, this time richer and more meaningful. It was no longer just a physical act, but a reaffirmation of our connection, a celebration of our progress. I feel like we're rediscovering each other, but better, Laura whispered one night as we lay together, the moon casting a gentle glow through our bedroom window. Yeah, it's like we're building something new on the foundation of what we had. I replied, my arm around her, feeling the warmth of her skin against mine. This period of rebuilding wasn't without its setbacks. There were days when the hurt resurfaced, stark and raw, triggered by a memory or a thought. But we had learned to deal with these moments by turning towards each other instead of away. One afternoon, a chance encounter with Marcus at a local store tested my resolve. The anger and betrayal bubbled up, fierce as ever. But returning home to Lara, seeing her in our garden, tending to the roses she loved, the anger had ebbed. I realized that our efforts to rebuild were not just about dealing with the past, but about moving towards a future together. We're doing okay, aren't we? Lara asked later, noticing my troubled expression when I joined her in the garden. We are, I affirmed, pulling her into a hug. Every day gets a little better. Rebuilding what was lost was perhaps one of the hardest journeys we had ever undertaken. Yet with each small step, each day spent together, we were not just repairing old wounds, we were forging a new, stronger bond, ready to face whatever challenges might come with a renewed sense of unity and purpose. Months had passed since the day I walked into our bedroom to find Laura with another man. The seasons changed, and with them, so did the nature of our relationship. Our home, once a battleground of hurt and mistrust, began to feel like a sanctuary again. It was a fragile new beginning, but it was ours, and it was real. On a crisp Saturday morning, as autumn leaves painted the ground in shades of amber and gold, Laura and I took a walk through the park, a routine that had become a cherished part of our week. Wrapped up in scarves and gloves, we walked hand in hand, enjoying the quiet and the comfort of each other's company. It's beautiful, isn't it? Laura remarked, 
gesturing at the vibrant foliage around us. It is, I agree, squeezing her hand gently. Kind of like a new beginning. Lara smiled, a soft, genuine smile that reached her eyes. I was thinking the same thing. We've come a long way, James. We found a bench and sat down, watching families and couples enjoying the day. It was peaceful, soothing in a way that our earlier encounters hadn't been. I felt a deep sense of gratitude for the progress we had made, for the resilience of our bond. Remember when we first came here? I asked, recalling one of our early dates. Lara laughed. You tried to win me a stuffed bear at that carnival booth over there and failed spectacularly. I did eventually win you one, though, I reminded her, joining in her laughter. You did, she affirmed, leaning her head on my shoulder, and I still have it. It's a reminder of the good times, and now it's also a symbol of overcoming the bad. The conversation shifted to plans for the future. We talked about renovating the kitchen, something Laura had always wanted. We discussed visiting Europe next summer, a trip we had put off for too long. It feels good to plan again, Laura said thoughtfully, to look forward instead of back. Yes, it does, I agreed. It feels like we're building something new on the foundation of what we always had. As we sat there, a sense of peace settled over me. The journey through betrayal, pain, and the arduous road to forgiveness had been grueling. Yet here we were, finding joy in each other's company, making plans, sharing dreams. The path to this point hadn't been easy. There were moments I doubted we could ever find our way back to each other. But through honest conversations, many tearful nights, and the relentless work in therapy, we had managed to start anew. This isn't just a new chapter, Laura, I said as we stood to continue our walk. It's a whole new book. And we're writing it together, she added, her voice steady and sure. As we walked back home, the world around us awash with the golden light of the late morning sun, I felt a cautious optimism about our future. Our new beginning was fragile, yes, but it was also filled with promise and hope. With each step we took, I knew that while the past may shape us, it did not have to define us. Together, we were moving forward, stronger and more connected than ever before.